Well, uh, no, California is the golden, uh, the golden country, the golden land. I think it's unique for America because it is, it is sort of the end of the dream. You get to California before you go to the ocean and before you go to, go to Asia. So California has collected people, uh, dreamers, from all over the, the country. And for a while it was get-rich-quick people with the miners and the prospectors, but that's gone into the past. Now it's solid families that want to grow, that want to make a better life for themselves. And I think the Indians try to catch a little bit of that. I think there's an analogy between Indian gaming and the old gold rush. There are many people that are thinking we can get rich quick. It starts with the politicians. It starts in the governor's office, previous governors, but certainly the current governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is thinking budget problems, ah, magic bullet, solution, free money, it's going to fall off of trees. Uh, members of uh, uh, groups that can show an Indian lineage, they say, we're going to organize a group, or we have a little community. We have the justification to ask for land, to have a casino. We can get rich quick. And then, of course, the gambler that goes to the casino is going there with the motivation, I'm going to get rich quick. So everybody involved in the game is, is of that old prospector feeling. But California came out of the gold rush and they entered a new golden state era when they were thinking, let's, let's have good for the entire community. Let's build up a state. Let's have a place families can come. And California concentrated on things like building the best education system and the best universities. And when they did that, they were thinking of the good of all Californians and all people. I think with Indian gaming, we, uh, th there are goods involved, but people are thinking me. They're thinking selfishly, small tribes. A governor who thinks more of uh, the budget than he does the economy of California. And then, of course, the gambler who's thinking uh, very selfishly as they're, they're pursuing wealth through this process. When California adopted this notion that we are the golden state, we're a beacon of light for everybody, look at us. Hiram Johnson was the governor, and he said we have to put money into public services and we all contribute to a common good. And he was followed with governors like Earl Warren and Goodwin uh, Knight, uh, and, and then uh, the two Browns. Uh, and Ronald Reagan, who was coming from a conservative viewpoint, still had this big picture of the good of all of California. Things changed drastically in 1978 when Proposition 13 was adopted. The tax base of California was just slashed. And rather than thinking growth, California started thinking contraction. The problem was that different elements in the California political community started thinking of their own good rather than the collective good. And we had a, a battle between the tax cutters who were basically middle class and better off, more affluent, people of the majority, and, and then the minorities, uh, mainly the, the uh, immigrants to California, and a we versus they battle. Education funding ceased being what is good from California, and now it was being, oh, what do the uh, affluent whites have to give to the Mexican Americans? And uh, it, it wasn't seen as, I'm giving for the betterment of society, I'm giving for my children, it's we are giving to them, and if you have to cut something, cut that. My kids can go to private schools. Cut education fund. My kids can go to out-of-state universities and cut other, uh, other uh, kinds of funding in the state. And it was, it was prompted by Prop 13, and then the state's in a deficit. And one of the first things the state turned to was the lottery. And uh, uh, Edmund Brown Jr., Jerry Brown, opposed the lottery. He said, this is bad for society, but the people voted it in anyway on, under the notion that hey, we can't fund education any other way. Here is free money, free money. The state got the lottery. Duke Machian fought Indian gaming, and to a degree, uh, so did the last governor. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger in his campaign in the, in the recall election, he said, I'm against Indian gaming. It was Bustamante that was being funded by Indian gaming. It's almost as if the day after the election, somebody showed Arnold Schwarzenegger the real budget. And he recognized, oh my goodness, 
smoke and mirrors isn't going to do it. Budget games and little shuffling of things isn't going to do it. My personality isn't going to do it. We need money quick. Fast money. All of a sudden, he became a promoter of Native American gambling in California. He just wanted the state to have a bigger share in it, and he's asked tribes now for 25%. And in a sense, he said to the tribes, you can have as much as you want. Just give us 25%. Free money, free money. And the tribes, some of them are lining up. Some of them are hesitant because they already have their operations and they don't want to increase the state's share. But uh, he seems to be a big promoter of Indian gaming now, and he's doing it with his eyes on one thing, the immediate budget of the state of California and the budget problems. He is not thinking of the general economy and the general good of the population of California. Because I have some serious questions about whether gambling will help the economy of a state that has economic problems. I have no question that Indian gaming, more Indian gaming, will produce tax, re tax revenues for Sacramento. This will happen. And the casinos will be big, and the Indian tribes will get a lot of money. But I have questions that all of the Indians of California will get money, because the ones not in tribes will not, and that's the vast majority. And I have questions about whether it's good for the California economy. Let me, let me sort of, in a, a very summarized fashion, tell why I think it's bad for the California economy. When you look at the economic impacts of gambling, you must consider positives and negatives. But the first thing you must consider is where does the money come from? After you establish where the money comes from, then you can ask, where does the money go? And let me give you a, a scenario that's a synopsis of all of the Indian reservations in California. Number one, the money comes from Californians, period. End of story. No tourism. The people that go to California Indian casinos are Californians. Now, some can suggest, as a group that wants a, a casino in San Pablo is suggesting, that that California money is money that Californians otherwise would spend in Nevada. Totally false. Nevada casinos are growing, growing, growing as gambling around the United States and as gambling in California is growing, growing, growing. You have more casinos in California, you're gonna have more Californians going to Nevada. It's something called Say's Law, and Kevin Costner put it succinctly in a, a movie called Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. We're not going to have static gambling spending by Californians. If you have a California casino, they'll do it here and they'll stop doing it in Nevada. No. You have a California casino, they will continue to go to Nevada, probably in greater numbers. 